And good morning or good afternoon in Europe and welcome to the second of our new webinar series. Uh, last month, if you remember, that was Yuri talking about our metric analysis report that was done from the factory, uh, just sort of explaining how we test each one of our metric cameras to make sure they're fully accurate and, and with the report. Um, if you need to see that webinar again, if you missed it, please go onto our website and at the very bottom of the first page, you'll see there's a new section called webinars where we're going to put all our broadcasts on there that have been recorded. So please go to that and scroll through and you will also see in the coming weeks our next uh, monthly systems. Okay, so this one will be on our phase one aerial system and it will be James Wardlow talking about it. But again, just before we start that, I want to do a quick reminder who, who we are at Phase One Industrial. So I am Steve Cooper and I'm the VP of Phase One Industrial. My background is fully in geomatics uh, and I've got a BSc Honours degree from Newcastle University a long, long time ago in mapping information science uh, using all the old techniques that I don't think we use anymore. OK, so Phase One itself is 25 years old and we are specialists in mostly innovative breakthroughs in medium format cameras. So what we do is we make the workflow more productive for your customers and yourselves to get a really good return on investment. Industrial section was started just over six years ago now and that was from a couple of requests to make our normal commercial cameras more robust and industrial to get them into strong positions. And as you know, we've gone from the IXA range, uh, although six years ago with the Rodenstock and Schneider lenses going onto the IXU uh, and also now just launched the IXM for drone work. And especially with the new Reliance shutter with half a million activations and more. But we will talk about that later on. So as you can see, we are pretty much the market leader in the world for medium format uh, with now well over 100,000 certified customers. Uh, we have a worldwide distribution all the way across and that includes 24 seven global support. Uh, that's either through our dealers ourselves in each country or in specific regions where we have our own office. And as mentioned, we are very strongly with 25 plus nationalities. Um, even though I'm British, I am actually based in the US office uh, James is British and actually based in the UK, but we are all over the place. So I show this screen quite often. This used to be just the phase one corporate as everyone, but this is now phase one industrial. You can see that we have sales and supports offices in, in North America and Colorado. We have uh, Cologne in Germany and we have Hong Kong to cover the three regions. Uh, always like to point out that our, our headquarters is still in Copenhagen with our R&D center being there for all the digital backs. We have for the SDK and very much based for the industrial section in Israel. And of course, not forgetting our factory, which is the full phase one factory in Japan that creates the new lenses and sort of designs the new shutters, etc. So talking about the technological edge, um, what do we mean by this? Um, the whole point is that we want to give you return on investment for your product and make you very efficient. So with our metric cameras, we really focused on delivering solutions that you can optimize your capabilities. So we use a varied around of sensors from 50 to 100 meg, creating solutions that, uh, for, and you'll see it soon, with the four band 190 meg uh, aerial systems. But with the new IXM, we are using the, the new sensor, uh, which can give us 100 meg, for obliques and also UAVs. Just as a rem reminder, our cameras are fully metric. So they have full reliability and metric analysis. Uh, we use very good central leaf shutters. That's our own technology. And the whole point of this is that it's industrial build. So as our name sells phase one industrial, everything is designed from scratch for aerial and hard use. Yep. So we have minimum seven years service and support. We have premium warranty programs. Uh, we are not off the shelf commercial cameras, which we use different components. We monitor these components all the time to make sure they're reliable and not gonna break down in the field. So we will explain this well. James will explain these cameras in more detail over the next few slides in 20 minutes or so. 
But our flagship is the IXURS 100 megapixel camera. Um, we will go through the specs later on, but just as a quick one, you know, the RS shutter has a minimum of half a million cycles. The shutter can go to a very fast shutter speed of one over 2,500. And that sort of gives us a capture cycle of 0.6 seconds per frame. So we can fly very high. Uh, we can use this as an FMC for uh, the high shutter speed and the high dynamic range. Uh, and again, talking about our, our RS shutter, it is new technology. This is not anywhere else. It is electromagnetic motor, so it keeps itself open. Um, so we can do a very fast acceleration in one direction. This is why we can have a very large lifetime and also a very fast exposure time. But we will go through this later on. Also talking about the premium warranty, uh, this RS shutter has been out for a good while now. Uh, we know exactly what it can do. So we also have the premium warranty, which is a yearly fee. Uh, and basically we can guarantee this for, for life. So for, for the uptime unit for when it comes in for a, um, a yearly service, uh, completely unlimited shutter activations. Uh, and as I say, the, it just comes into service for once a year just to be checked out and carried on through. Also remember all our cameras, as we said, are metric. Not only that, our lenses are all made and sort of tested in our factory in Japan. Every single one of them has a distortion model assigned to them. Um, so we know exactly where the distortion is on that lens corresponding to the camera body onto the back of it. So this will always give a distortion free image on the fly. So you don't have to do anything afterwards. It's fully calibrated on through to give you a full distortion free image. And this makes a big difference when you're having to post process afterwards. So enough for me. So I'm going to pass you on to James Wardlow, who's our system sales manager for phase one industrial. He has been a pilot and navigator since 2006. As you can see in the pictures, he looks quite young, but he has a rather large bit of experience and he works globally with various large format aerial survey companies with all aspects of acquisition, from flight planning, quotations, uh, projects, mission patrols, QA, etc. He also works on our high accuracy mapping for the drones with the IXM. Um, and as well as you can see on the little video, hope it came through okay. We use him as our model to time how quickly he can take the PAS system out of the camera and back. So his current time is three minutes and 15 seconds. So James, you need to increase that and get your speed up. Yep. And over to you, James. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Um, welcome to the presentation on the uh, Phase 1 Aerial Systems. Uh, as Steve already mentioned, I've uh, been pilot and navigator since uh, 2006. Uh, worked all over the world with uh, large format uh, aerial sensors, LiDAR systems, uh, hyperspectral. Uh, so I have a, a good range of knowledge when it comes to uh, comes to um, large format uh, systems. Okay. So I'd like to just take uh, the opportunity to uh, discuss the uh, the phase one aerial systems. They come in both the uh, 100 megapixel and 190 megapixel uh, configurations. Uh, just to go into a little bit more detail now with the um, specifications for the 100 megapixel. So primarily we're supplying the 100 megapixel with the IXU RS1000. It comes with the uh, Rodenstock lenses with focal length of 32 through to 150 millimeters. Uh, the aperture range is, uh, is very good with uh, fully open at 5.6 to uh, f22. As already mentioned by Steve, it uses central leaf shutter uh, for the exposure principle uh, with uh, capture speeds, ex well, exposure speeds of uh, as slow as 1 over 125 to as fast as 1 over 2500. This gives us the CMOS sensor the ability to capture one frame every 0 0.6 seconds. And uh, we've also got very good light sensitivity with the ISO from uh, 50 up to 6400. Uh, the sensor specifications itself it uses a sensor, uh, sorry, Sony CMOS uh, sensor, 4.6 um, microns per pixel, and that gives us a, uh, a sensor array of 11,608 by 8,708 um, pixels. The typical image size with the 100 megapixel is approximately 300 megabytes uh, per image. Okay.
So for the near infrared, we have uh, the ability to use the RGB camera, uh, convert that for a near infrared, and we also have um, achromatic options to uh, create our, our near infrared solutions. Uh, so an IXURS 1000 near infrared plus the IR cut filter can give us the RGB image, but also from the same camera with the IR filter of 830 nanometers, we can get the near infrared image. Okay. Combining our RGB cameras with the uh, near infrared solution or an achromatic solution, we can create our four band solution. This is using the two separate IXG 1000 cameras plus our controller and the IX capture software. This can give us a range of uh, agricultural um, solutions that can provide uh, the false color infrared image or an NDVI image. This can be used as mentioned for agricultural um, projects. So going on to the IXU 1900, uh, we have two uh, solutions with this, either the RGB only or the uh, four band uh, solution just for the RGB. It's a uh, configuration of two lenses. It has a focal length of 90 millimeters, which gives us a field of view across of approximately 45.7 degrees. It has the same aperture range as the single IXU 1000 of uh, f5.6 to f22. It uses the same uh, central leaf shutter, and uh, the only major difference is the uh, fastest exposure speed with the 1900 is 1 over 2000. We still get the same one frame for every 0.6 seconds, and the uh, ISO range remains the same. The combined 190 megapixel image is 16,470 pixels across by 11,570 pixels forward. And this gives us an approximate image size of about 570 megabytes for the RGB. When taking into account the IXU RS 1900 four band, we use the same 90 millimeter lenses for the RGB, but then to get the same image footprint with the near infrared, we use a 50 millimeter Rodenstock lens. This then, depending on whether we use the achromatic camera, gives us a pan sharpen ratio of one, point, uh, one to 1 1.8, sorry. The typical image size for the uh, four band is about 600, uh, 760 uh, megabytes. Okay. So how do we create this image? So we take the two uh, camera systems and we've taken the image sensor and we've shifted them to the outside edges of the uh, of the lens. So the left-hand sensor is um, responsible for the right side area of the image. The right-hand sensor is responsible for the left, uh, left area. And we have approximately 5% overlap between the two images to create the 190 megapixel image. With this configuration, it allows us to keep uh, a fully homogeneous uh, GSD across the footprint, uh, which gives us the best image, image quality possible. Okay. So it's just a quick slide uh, that shows the um, efficiency of our camera compared to some other uh, well-known uh, large format systems. Uh, so if we can see from this, the blue bar represents the IXU 1000 RS, which would be the 100 megapixel system. The green band is representing the IXU 1900. Silver is for the UCX. The gold is for UCXP, and the uh, red is for the, the Ultracam Eagle. So we're vastly greater uh, in footprint than the UCX. In fact, uh, on a standard rural specification with 20% side overlap, we're approximately 14% more uh, efficient than the UCX. When compared to the UCXP, uh, we're slightly less efficient at uh, only 95%, uh, so only 5% efficiency less. Um, but when you consider the fact the camera is uh, combined weight of, of nearly less than 100 kilograms of the UCXP, then uh, it's it's greatly um, increased in efficiency with uh, the availability of aircraft it can be installed into. Okay. So we'll just now look at the um, systems in, in general and the, the uh, components. So if we look at the system overview, we have the two uh, different systems. So we have the 190 megapixel and the 100 megapixel. So the 190 megapixel is configured uh, with the DSM 400 uh, SOMAG mount and the 100 megapixel IXU 1000 system is configured with the CSM 40 mount. 
Everything below that uses the same software, IRIX Capture, IX Plan, IX Flight, and that's all run through our controller. We use the Aplanix solutions for the uh, GNSS IMU. Um, the one pictured is the AVX210, but we also integrate with the uh, POS AV systems, 310 through to 510. So looking at the individual components, so this is the 100 megapixel. So we start with the camera, then onto that we have the SOMAG uh, produced pod. Sitting on top of that is the AVX210, and this is all contained within the CSM40 mount. Uh, pictured, unfortunately, is a CSM130, but it's the same form factor as the CSM40. There's just a few more um, additions on the CSM40. The controller in this application will be installed separately um, to, uh, to the actual camera system. That's just because of the weight uh, limitation on the mount. Okay, so onto the 190 megapixels. So we start with the RGB camera. Then we have the near infrared for the four band option. This is contained inside the Aplanix, uh, sorry, the SOMAG uh, pod. On top of that is a mounting plate, which sits the controller. And on top of that, we sit the AVX210 IMU. And then this all sits inside the uh, SOMAG DSM400 mount. Uh, this is all contained centrally over the hole. So there's no need for um, external computing units. Uh, everything is, is self-contained in, in one, one convenient unit. Onto the 510 system, so it's the same RGB uh, camera, near infrared, pod, base plate, controller. Then the only difference is the POS AV unit and the uh, Type 80 IMU that sits on, on top. And then this is still contained all, all inside the DSM 400 mount. And there's no, again, no requirement for um, external uh, computing units. So onto the power connections, everything is powered through our IX controller. Uh, so it requires only one single power outlet from the aircraft to the controller. This can be from 12 volts up to 30 volts. From there, we have uh, LIMO style connectors that go out to individual components. So we have three um, outlets to the, uh, to the camera systems. One outlet goes to the AVX210, and then we have uh, two LIMO connectors that are, con are connecting to the uh, operator and pilot monitor package. So for the communications, so it all begins with the uh, powering on of the IX controller. Through powering on the IX controller, this also automatically powers up the AVX210. Once the, everything is powered up, we uh, initialize the IX capture, which we also initialize the IX flight. This also in turn initializes the sensor handler. Once everything's initialized, the POS AVX210 uh, start streaming the position to the IX flight through a TCP IP command. That's through the green arrow from the AVX210 to the Ethernet port on the controller. During the flight, the IX flight and the sensor handler components sends out the trigger command to the left-hand side camera of the RGB uh, IXU 1900RS. This then, for a sequence of daisy chains, uh, uh, finalizes the, uh, the triggering of the system. It all happens within 50 microseconds. Once the camera has fin finished triggering, we have the mid-exposure pulse is sent from the camera uh, to the AVX210. The AVX210 then records the navigation data internally and then returns a message to the IXURS um, 1900, either with event one or enemy A message. IX Capture then stores free images via USB free connections with the metadata to the SSD drives on the controller. So the general acquisition and processing workflow, uh, we'll go into uh, more detail with the individual software components uh, in, in, few, in later slides, uh, but everything begins in the office um, with our IX Plan software. Uh, the IX Plan software itself is licensed through a dongle, so it can be transferred through many, many workstations with one dongle. Uh, it also allows the operator to do some flight planning if required on the, uh, on the IX controller if, if required. Uh, during image acquisition, um, everything is controlled and captured using the IX Flight software, which is uh, our in-house developed FMS. And we also use the IX Capture uh, 3.1 um, software for the image acquisition. For image navigation and data processing, we use the IX Capture 3.1 and Capture 1.11 uh, software for the uh, image processing. 
And then for the GNSS IMU processing, we're using the POSPAC MMS, uh, currently on version 8.3. Uh, for later photogrammetry, uh, we are recommending the uh, Trimble Info Suite. So RX Plan, this is our flight planning software. This allows uh, camera and sensor creation, uh, project creation. You can uh, create your project based on uh, multiple GSDs, multiple overlaps. It doesn't require a new flight plan per specification. You can uh, you can really uh, configure and customize your flight planning um, using this software. Uh, it has automatic download functions for SRTM, uh, DTM data. Uh, you can also download and utilize uh, various other DTM packages, either USGS, uh, TIFDEM, um, XYZ, uh, text files, uh, and uh, there's a lot of other um, automatic functions in this software that uh, makes flight planning uh, much more easy and, and much more convenient. So for the Planix, uh, this is the AVX210 um, overview screen. Through here, this allows you to configure the AVX210. Uh, you can configure the mounting angles of the unit, uh, the lever arm values. Through here, you can you, uh, create your communication uh, commands. It also controls the logging, which is done to an internal uh, logging um, card. This is up to eight gigabytes, which provides um, many, many hours of uh, potential survey. Okay. So this is the sensor handler. This runs in, con in conjunction with our IX Flight FMS. Uh, the sensor handler itself is controlling all aspects of the data capture. It communicates with IX Flight to send the trigger to capture the image. It's also uh, taking the uh, navigation data from the AVX210 and sending that to the IX flight to manage the uh, navigation of the, uh, of the uh, survey flight. So the IX flight uh, screen itself, we've recently just updated the, um, the software. This is the, uh, the very latest version. So with this software, we've uh, Customized it to basically show only the information that is, is pertinent to the pilot. There is no excess clutter of information that is not required. Through here, it gives a very detailed um, description of, of your altitude based to the planned altitude, your cross track errors, uh, distance from uh, the start of the line to the end of the line. Uh, we use uh, standard rate turns uh, to compute the, um, compute the turning. Uh, circles. So it's very simple uh, software to use. You can also see there in the top right corner of the screen, uh, it shows you the connection status of all of the um, components. So it's uh, very, very simple, very straightforward uh, software for the pilot and the operator to uh, conduct a, a survey flight. Okay. So the IX Capture, this is the uh, image viewer and uh, camera control. So through here, we can see that this is being flown with a four band solution. On the left hand side is the RGB image, which in real time is showing the, uh, the full 190 megapixel image. On the right hand side is showing the, uh, the return from the near infrared camera. Uh, through here, we can control the ISO, aperture and exposure settings of the camera. It gives us real time SSD storage check with terms to how many frames are remaining and also what is the uh, physical storage remaining left on the card in gigabytes. Uh, we have a uh, histogram in the top corner of each camera that shows us exposure feedback and we can also track the exposure value of uh, each individual frame that's captured so you can really keep track of how the exposure is changing along a flight line. Okay. So we'll look at some now applications and, and results that we've uh, gathered from the system. So for applications to start with, so you can see that um, using the 100 megapixel uh, system with the CSM40 mount, we can really fit in the very smallest of aircraft pictured there as a Cessna 182, uh, but we can also um, fit them into uh, ultralights, uh, gyrocopters, um, and then obviously uh, with the 190 megapixel system, then we can start going into the larger, larger aircraft pictured there as a Cessna 206 and the Cessna 208. Um, but so far, we've we've installed uh, the system in, in many 
aircraft ranging from the, the small Cessnas up to uh, the larger King Airs, Aero Commander 690s. So the system really integrates into uh, the smallest to the largest of the aircraft. Okay. So this was an image that uh, was captured uh, recently with the 190 megapixel. Um, we actually captured this at uh, the beginning of February, so the conditions were less than ideal. Uh, it was actually also flown in the late afternoon, so it was flown with quite um, quite large, uh, well, it was quite a low sun angle, so um, so any of the uh, shadows from features are, are actually quite long. Uh, it was 2.5 centimetre GSD. Uh, we flew this in a Pat Navia um, P-68 aircraft at 130 knots, uh, with also 80% forward overlap. Um, the altitude at uh, 2.5 centimetre was 600, uh, 1,600 feet. And uh, we've used an exposure setting of 1 over 1600 and an ISO of, of 640. Okay. okay. And here is the uh, the false colour infrared image of the uh, the same same footprint. So just on some um, GNSS accuracy plots, this was from the same same flight. Um, this uh, particular plot is showing the actual X, Y, Z accuracies uh, from the flight. So we can see the green bar is representing the uh, down position accuracy or the Z value that uh, was better for the, uh, the whole flight than four centimeters. X and Y uh, was floating between sort of 2.5 to three centimeter uh, accuracy, which is, uh, which is very good. This next plot, for anyone who's familiar with uh, the Aplanix POSPAC, uh, this is the processing mode. Um, everyone who's been processing with uh, Aplanix will know that uh, the ideal solution is, is zero, fixed to NL, and uh, this we really did achieve with this flight. Uh, just a quick um, plot just to show the baseline length. This was the, uh, the distance of the, uh, of the aircraft um, from the continued operating reference station. Uh, so we were actually quite close um, at all times to this this block, and it was actually uh, flown in a calibration um, sort of uh, procedure. So it, with these uh, results, it would be more than suitable for a, a calibration um, processing. A quick PDOP chart. Uh, PDOP remained less than uh, less than two for the entire flight. Uh, the next slide. Um, We'll show why, because the AVX210 is, is using a GNSS solution with both GPS and GLONASS outputs. So this is the uh, satellite chart. Uh, so it shows that we have a good receiver of um, both GPS and, and GLONASS uh, signals. Okay. Uh, this flight, uh, this was flown the day after the uh, that previous flight that we just saw. It was uh, flown in very challenging conditions. Uh, it was actually flown under very heavy, um, low-level overcast. The GSD of this image is uh, is two centimeter GSD, and again, it was flown with a Pat Navia P68 at um, about 130 knots with an overlap of of 80% uh, forward. Um, as you can see, despite the uh, uh, challenging lighting conditions, the image still retains a lot of detail, even in the shadowy areas, and. Uh, just uh, the, the area that we've um, selected out there is, is just a, a nice uh, nice area that really just shows the, uh, the contrast in, in the colors of the camera and, and the, um, the good quality image that comes back from the, the RXU 1900. Uh, this is the false color infrared image of the, uh, of the same, same footprint. Okay, so now we just get on some, uh, some basic uh, pricing. Um, so, this is uh, the sort of six main configurations that we do with the system. It starts with the, uh, the 100 megapixel um, PAS with the AVX210. Uh, with the whole package that you see there, it comes with the, uh, the camera, the premium warranty, the calibration. We have the controller, the CSM, the pod, and all of the Aplanix, and also the FMS bundle. That starts at 140,000 euros or 175,000 US dollars. Then as we start getting into the 100 megapixel um, four band, uh, it goes up in price to 218,000 for the system for the euros and 265,000 for the US dollars. 
the very larger system that we have, which is the PAS 190 four band with 510. That's a bundle price of 415,000 euros or 510,000 US dollars. So that's just a basic overview of the pricing. And uh, at the end of the presentation, um, you'll be able to take my email address to uh, to get some um, more pricing options should you should you require them. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, James. Um, also, this, okay. this last. Um, this last slide is a is a picture that uh, I did here in the UK with the, the US team. Sorry, in, in the US or the US team. Um, you can hopefully see it on the screen. This is actually only a snapshot of the 190 image that we took straight off. Um, you can see just here in this sort of left hand side, you can see a plane taking off, which we've done a zoom in. Um, how one of my team actually saw that slide, because this is one of about, I think it was about 7,000 shots we took that day. Um, and he actually saw that, obviously that is not in the picture before or after because of the speed. We were flying from north, sorry, from south to north at around about 140 knots. Um, and obviously this is a, a small jet that is taking off, uh, probably going a little bit less than that. But when you actually see this image, you can see there's absolutely no blur or fudge in these images at all so this is where we talked before about how the fmc um, is what we class is a blur reduction so we use a very fast shutter speed and also the high iso and db range of the cameras to get rid of um, any forward motion control um, so we will have a document on the website pretty soon that sort of explains how we use the fmc for the cmos technology um, so that will be available online pretty soon okay so um, as everyone could see, uh, I should have said it beforehand, there's a little tab on the, uh, the control panel that has questions. There's been a few questions already for you, James. So if there's any more that people want to put on, start throwing them in as I ask James these questions. Um, I'm going to lump them all together. One was pricing. So um, someone has asked, um, is it possible to get in touch with you, James, for pricing and quotes? Um, and also asking, those prices at the end seem pretty cheap. Does that include everything or what is hidden? So James, if you want to sort of uh, clarify the price of the package. Uh, yes, everything that was um, that was displayed there on, on the uh, on the pricing list uh, is, is everything that's included. Uh, the only additions are, are things if you require the monitor package, this comes at a, a slightly uh, slightly little well, higher cost um, of uh, what is the monitor package 1,250, Steve? Correct. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, the reason that we've done that is because uh, it's it, you can either buy the monitor package uh, direct from us, or it gives you the option um, if you wanted a, a customized monitor package. But everything uh, that was listed in the price list, can you bring that back up, Steve? Yep. Certainly. <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so everything that is is listed um, makes a fully working turnkey um, system. So uh, if you required the just an RGB um, system uh, with AV510. Uh, then, of course, comes the IXU RS1 uh, 1900 camera for the RGB. That comes with one year of the IX Premium warranty. It comes with a metric calibration of that camera. Uh, you get the controller, which comes with the FMS and flight planning package. Um, the SOMAG 400 is included. The, the pod for the camera system for the uh, SOMAG is included. And it even comes with the Planix uh, software for the MMS and the and the photo tools. Uh, so everything that's listed is included, and each package um, essentially gives you a turnkey uh, system, which is ready for installation into an aircraft uh, for for survey work. That's it. Okay. Thank you, James. So, so just to reiterate on that is that we on every single one of these solutions, we always include the premium warranty. So again, it's to keep your dying downtime uh, there. So each camera, uh, whether it's a, a single camera, the 190 or the 194 band, it all comes as standard with a premium warranty for every camera. So um, the lenses, um, always have a, you know, if you need to send them in for service for the yearly thing, we, we always have a backup camera for you so that you should always be able to run the system as it's going along. Yep. The only thing that you need to end, as James pointed out a while ago, is obviously your processing software for your photogrammetry suite. So however you 
do your normal survey package, um, et cetera. So this is not included because there are so many out there and you can use your own. So our data with the geotagged images can automatically go into virtually every software suite that is out there. Okay. Uh, another question was, uh, I'm going to sort of put about five together here, um, talking about the maximum capture rate. Um, so we said it was 0.6 seconds uh, capture rate per image. Now that is for all the images. So whether it's a 100 meg, a 190, a 194 band, all of the cameras are daisy chained together and all of them are connected to the IX controller through the USB 3 ports. That is how we can guarantee, and it doesn't matter how many times you trigger them, how many shots you're taking, each camera pod will capture in 0.6 seconds direct to the SSDs on the IX controller. Um, someone has also asked if can that be done directly to the card on board the camera. Um, that can be done, but obviously with the amount of image that you probably will be taking, we keep it on board the IX controller. So if you can see on the screen, you'll see there's two bays for the hard drives. These are SSDs. They're very high speed and uh, access rights. Um, and they can go up to well, anything for an SSD. So they come as standard with the one terabyte. Um, and as I say, that is all 0.6 seconds for every image. Yep. Um, just out of interest, James, on your last flight, um, how many images did you run in one go? And um, you know how many images failed? Uh, no images failed, but um, that last flight we did was over 1,600 images. Okay, so there we are. It's so getting close to, as I say, just over 1,500 images with zero failure rates and everything carrying on. I think you did a very large overlap. Was it was it 80% overlap? Uh, well, we flew um, several different specifications in that one flight. There was some uh, flown at um, 1,000 feet with, uh, I think it was only 60% forward overlap. Uh, then we flew another block, which was with 8% forward overlap. So uh, we flew generally around about 1,500 feet with 8% forward overlap was uh, the majority of the flight, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, that is pretty much it. There's a few people have obviously asked for direct quotes and um, contact afterwards. Um, so James, do you mind uh, just giving your contact details over the um, over the line, just so that they can get in contact with you direct? Yep. Yep, not at all. So uh, the email, you can get hold of me through email. It's jwa at phase1.com. And by phone, you can get hold of me as plus four four for the UK, double seven two seven zero nine seven five four six. Okay, thank you very much. Um, a couple more have just come in, just as I said, that was all for questions. Uh, one last question was about compression rates. Um, so someone obviously knows what they're talking about here, talking about the IAQL and IAQS. Um, it doesn't matter which um, format you use on board. So you can either have the, um, the S, which is the compressed version, uh, which sort of gives it very close to half the rate. But there is a very low um, uh, lossless um, image on that but it uses both IAQL or IAQS and still can do the 0.6 seconds. So obviously if you're using IAQS, it can go a lot quicker. Yep. Okay, so we, we expect everything is the most highest. So using the IAQL for 0.6 seconds. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's no more questions there that I can see. Uh, just a few private ones, which we'll answer in due course. Um, we will have this uh, coming along line. Um, so this will be on the website hopefully tomorrow we will upload it on there uh, any questions please send James or myself a quick email or get on contact with us through the website and um, please keep an eye on the website for the next webinar um, which is coming along uh, this time next month also we'd like to ask because we are wanting to do these quite regularly if there's anything you particularly want us to talk about in depth so anything that you can think we, we need to do, whether it's application based, whether it's technical based, um, things like the FMC, things about the, uh, the compression rates, please send us a quick email uh, or just put it on the website and we can put that into a webinar near the end of the year where we can sort of put all the customer wishes in one go. So please do have a think about that and, and get in touch. So James, thank you very much and speak to you soon. Bye now. Thank you.